Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to BTech. It's Basil here reviewing the Huawei P8. Huawei's last flagship, the P7, was always good, but it was never really great. Then again, it didn't cost as much as flagships of its day though. The P8 is better in virtually every respect, so how does it stack up against its predecessor and indeed every other flagship on the market? This is our full review, so you are in the perfect place to find out. Design-wise, the P8 is the slimmest all-metal phone around at 6.4 millimeters. Head on, it looks very generic, though it's available in a range of colors to give it some personality. Still, there are some design highlights. The sides are slightly bulbous and feel soft in the hand in spite of the all metal frame. It also looks expensive. The power button is beautifully recessed and has really decent travel and the volume buttons are very easy to navigate without even looking at them because they protrude nicely but not too much. Stylistically the bottom of the phone looks good. A speaker grill and a microphone grill both bookend the micro USB port. Up top there's a 3.5mm headphone jack. Given the fact it's so thin it's little wonder that Huawei made such a big deal about the fact it has a completely flat back. No protruding camera surround like the Samsung Galaxy S6, the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus as well as HTC One M9. Like I said though, it looks generic. It does look more generic than the P7, its predecessor, and I'm kind of sad that Huawei didn't really cement their design identity like they did with the P6 and P7. Overall though, it's a good looking phone and one that's hard to fault too heavily when it comes to the design. Onto the screen now. 5.2 inches LTPS LCD technology and full HD resolution. If all that sounds like gobbledygook to you, it's basically a Sony Xperia Z3 screen. It's less bright than an iPhone 6 for example, but it's still very, very punchy amongst the most punchy LCD display out there. Viewing angles are good and it's also nice and sharp too. Now, full HD isn't Samsung Galaxy S6 levels of sharp, but 424 pixels per inch makes it sharper than both of the iPhones and puts it pretty much on par with the best of HTC and Sony for example. You can also customize the white balance and the settings which is really handy for anyone who wants maximum control over their screen experience. Suffice to say between the screen's sharpness, the lack of bezels which give it a real presence and the quality and saturation of the panel, it's a very very good one from Huawei. Is it the best out there? Definitely not. The Samsung Galaxy S6 screen is sharper and looks more pleasing but it's definitely one of the best which is very good going for a phone that costs around £360. Inside that screen it's Android 5.0 and Emotion UI 3.1 or EMUI for short. Anyone who's used a Huawei phone or seen one of my recent Huawei reviews will know exactly what to expect. An iOS style Android experience. This means you get a variable number of home screens that you can populate with applications, folders and widgets. There's no applications tray and that's part of the reason I said it was very iOS like. You can also pull down one of your home screens and you activate a spotlight search or a universal search. In addition you can also pull down from the top to pull down a notifications bar where you can swipe notifications out of the way and swipe to the right to access your shortcuts. Overall the look and feel of Emotion UI 3.1 is more polished than past iterations. It's heavily customizable too which is both fun and a little bit dangerous. You can swap out your themes and the number of cat themes on the Chinese Emotion UI store is really really bonkers. I was in feline heaven here. Transitions are also customizable. You can also add a fourth button to the bottom navigation panel, making it really nice and easy for you to pull down the notifications bar with a simple tap of that button. Perfect for people with smaller hands. Having said that though, not all customizations are so well executed. Huawei's implemented a new tech that can tell the difference between a finger and a knuckle. When working to full effect, the tech allows you to draw around an area with your knuckle and it will screen grab that area. That sounds very, very cool. You can also double tap the display and it will screen grab the entire screen. While it could have been terrific, unfortunately in reality it's pretty terrible. At least 10 times a day when using the P8 it registered my finger as a knuckle. Double taps of elements on the display would take screen grabs, swipes in would attempt to screen grab a section and it would really break my workflow when using my phone. Normally this is more annoying than anything else but when playing a game for example or doing something important it was a little bit infuriating to be honest. What's worse is you can't turn this off and if you can I couldn't figure out how to do it. The UI 
UI also isn't totally buttery smooth all the time. This could come down to the Kirin 930 processor, it could come down to optimization or simply overloading of Emotion UI. Personally, I reckon it's the last two because this is the heaviest iteration that we've seen to date. For example, Huawei's also implemented a voice to wake function. They say you should use it to find your phone if it's lost in a room. You have to be within around a meter of it for it to work. So generally speaking, like I said, it seems more overloaded than useful. Finally, Huawei implemented a Wi-Fi switcher in the P8 and it's called Wi-Fi Plus. This works some of the time to find the best network available for you, which is great, but a couple of times it actually forced us onto a network that required a sign-in when we were on a network that didn't. So you can see the issue here. It's trying to be too smart for its own good. Luckily though, unlike that knuckle tech, you can switch this off. Either way, all of this just takes away from the polish when comparing Emotion UI 3.1 to TouchWiz, HTC Sense, and iOS 8. One good thing though is that you can install a custom launcher on here, and Google Now Launcher works very well, even if it doesn't fix that knuckle issue. Overall, therefore, looks like when it comes to the user interface, Huawei's done what Samsung did a couple of years ago. They've thrown too much on here, and hopefully next time, Huawei will do what Samsung has done now and strip back a little. It isn't all overkill though. The camera on this thing is brilliant. The rear camera is 13 megapixels with an RGBW sensor. It also has optical image stabilization, an f2 lens, and an imaging processor that's akin to a DSLR. In good light, you can get some great detail. It's a really versatile camera, whether you're outdoors or indoors in great, great lighting. Color accuracy is very good, with white balance better than the iPhone 6 in certain situations. Close-up objects look great when shooting macro, and the P8 can pull a nice amount of blur from the background in standard photo mode. Low light performance is also very impressive. Results are definitely overexposed by default, so they make everything look a little bit lighter than they are to help compensate for the poor lighting in the room you're in. But in the same breath, you can very easily control the exposure with a standard iOS drag up, drag down gesture. The dual flash is also very bright should the lights get too low. It doesn't expose as evenly as the iPhone 6s flash or the Samsung Galaxy S6s, but colors tend to be good. On to video, and the optical image stabilization pairs with the digital image stabilization to create a very, very stable image. In fact, it's some of the most static footage that I have ever seen on a smartphone. Again, massive hats off to Huawei here. The downsides, the audio recording isn't fantastic, and there's no 4K shooting on board for anyone who likes to crop into their video. There are some other modes on here, though, that really do enhance the whole photography experience. Huawei's automated a light trail mode, which means you can get really good handheld light trails. Definitely better than anything I've seen for light trails handheld on a DSLR or indeed another smartphone. There's also an HDR photo mode, a time-lapse video mode, and a few others. I would have loved manual shooting, sure, but at the heart of it, this is a stonking camera which impresses me no end. As for the front camera, eight megapixels, the beauty mode does the standard Huawei thing, turning you into a blow-up doll, takes good pictures with decent levels of detail and fair low light performance. As for other multimedia, the screen showcases it off well. If your ebook reading it's nice and sharp and like I said has accurate white balance, videos you can get Netflix on here, other services that will allow you to stream, you can also get video players with no problem whatsoever and everything looks brilliant on that display. Unfortunately though it's not the same story for gaming and this all comes down to what I spoke about earlier, that knuckle technology. If you want to play a fast paced game for more than 5-10 minutes, you can forget about it. Even if the core processor and everything like that is well up to the challenge, that knuckle tech means you're going to be taking screenshots when you double tap accidentally. You'll be swiping, it'll think it's a knuckle and it won't register. It'll basically make you lose in the game. Not cool. This is such a shame, as the core gaming experience could have been so good. All 2D games and pretty much every 3D game we threw it played back perfectly. The really tough games out there can drop a frame or two, but this still performs better than any other phone in the price category. If you're heavily into games,
gaming therefore performance wise this can do it i'd also recommend you pick up a 32 gig version as well so you can store all your games on there unfortunately though i can't recommend this as a touch screen gaming device until huawei enables switching off that knuckle tech as for the loudspeaker, it's loud. About as loud as the Samsung Galaxy S6's. It hasn't quite got the clarity, but it is easier to listen to being a little bit less shrill. It is also, just like the Galaxy S6's speaker, incredibly easy to cover up, especially when gaming. The P8 is also expandable by micro SD card up to 128 gigabytes. The 16 gigabyte version will set you back 449 euros, about 360 pounds, whereas the 32 gigabyte version will set you back 549 euros. Powering everything along is an octa-core Huawei Kirin processor. Four of those cores are a Kirin 930, the other four of those cores are a Kirin 935. There's also three gig of RAM on board and the P8 benchmarks really well, just behind the Note 4. Again, a phone that is much, much more expensive. It's all really well connected too. You've got Cat6 LTE if you're on the right network here in the UK. You've also got NFC, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi Direct and a GPS as well. Reception is great and call quality is very good, making the Huawei P8 a great phone. The final hurdle when reviewing any smartphone is always battery and unfortunately the 2600 milliamp cell inside the Huawei P8 just isn't good enough. It's the same capacity as the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge and similar to the S6. Now the S6 and S6 Edge didn't have good battery lives but they did have fast charging and a few charging options to help it along. The P8 does not have fast charging. Unlike the Galaxy S6, 15, 20 minutes of charge in the middle of the day won't make your phone last from morning to night. Instead, we fell flat on our faces by 6 p.m., usually the time I need my smartphone the most. The PA is therefore a very good looking phone that delivers great value for money. The major shortcomings come in the form of that overblown user interface and the underperforming battery life. The design is very premium though. The screen is nice and punchy and it has one of the best cameras around on any smartphone at the moment. Pretty impressive considering it costs around £160 less than an iPhone 6 or Samsung Galaxy S6 for example. If Huawei fixes that knuckle issue with a software update I can very easily recommend the P8. After all who doesn't have a battery pack these days? In the same breath if they don't and you're a gamer I'd probably avoid it looking at other flagships instead. Hopefully you've enjoyed my review. If you have click that like button. If you like BTEC in general then click Click subscribe, that's how you're going to stay on top of everything that we do here. Also, if you have any questions about the Huawei P8 or indeed any other devices that I've spoken about either in this video or any other, just fire them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, BTECT.